Torpid commotion. And you have lost that get up and go feeling. I'm just so tired lately. I mean, all the parties and going here and there. Oh, well, well, why don't you uh, lie down and take a nap? Oh, well, that sounds good, yeah. Oh, I'll just go over here and lay down on this sofa bed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's just perfect. <laughs> this is very nice. Oh, hey, careful. Uh, that hide-a-bed has a tricky latch. So if you lie down on it, it, it wh- might... What's that? It has a... Whoa! Oh, <laughs> Close prematurely. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> Welcome in. To this, the 235th edition of Fusebox Frenetically, entitled Torpid Commotion. And I'm your building for a better tomorrow as soon as I can find some glue. Host, Mark Rose, and over there, seemingly glowing from his own inner light, is the... (laughs) Is the... Commander-in-Chief of Audio Compression, Milt Keynes, everybody. <laughs> well, thank you kindly. You know, um, just earlier today, we, we were talking about that uh, shrinkage dilemma that a lot of retailers have lately. Oh, yeah, 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 better known as theft. Or as, uh, I guess what they're referring to it now, it's, it's called uh, organized retail crime. Yeah, not surprising. I mean... Uh, we have a mutual friend who was trying to play Good Samaritan by trying to stop a theft in progress at one of those uh, big box stores and was maced by the perp as a reward. Yep, that's right. Uh, yeah, it, it's really, really serious out there. For, uh, for the most part, uh, a lot of retailers, just, they, they, they just tell the staff to not engage with the perpetrators. Just let them go. Well, you know, in fairness... You don't know what the hell they could be carrying. And in some places in this country where it's considered just fine and dandy to open carry a grenade launcher into a target, well, they could take the whole damn place out if you tried to stop them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, you know, I was just reading this morning about a uh, fix uh, that the grocery chain Kroger has in mind. What, closing all the stores so you can't steal anything? (laughs) Almost as dumb. (laughs) No, uh, they want to make it pretty much impossible to have someone check out your purchases, you know? They want to nearly replace all human checkout clerks with auto checkout scanners. Oh, no, you you don't mean those things that never work correctly, and then they have just as many people standing around as they employ to check out your purchases just so they can assist you? Yep. Yep, the same. But uh, here's the deal with this uh, Kroger thing. They're going to use AI-equipped cameras to watch the checkout process to evaluate whether you are stealing. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me bring Let me bring this up. Here's, uh, here, let me, here's what they say. Uh, it's a, a company called Everseen Visual AI will virtually examine the video of the customer checking out, flagging any discrepancies. The AI flags not only incidents of customer stealing, but also abnormal patterns, and it will alert store personnel. Okay, what the hell does that mean? Well, exactly. And and, uh, it goes on here. It says, uh, if a customer does not efficiently scan and bag their items... Even if they're not stealing, they could face the indignity of a store employee coming to examine their bags. The technology alerts customers when an item has not been scanned, but when a second item is missed, store personnel are alerted. Kroger chiefs have claimed that such technology has helped reduce over 75% of errors at the self-checkout. Yeah, and make sure people don't shop there ever again. 
Who the hell wants to risk prosecution over a potential AI error? Which is going to happen all the damn time. Yeah, of course. So again, this tech really only benefits the company and not the consumers, of course. Most people hate these things. Kroger doesn't seem to give a damn about that. That They're bringing the tech to more than 1,700 stores and plan to uh, deploy it across the entire chain of 2,800 stores in 35 states. Well, you know what? I've used, and I'm sure many of us uh, have used this technology before. And seriously, less than one-third of the time, it's accurate. Please place your item on the scanner. It is. It's on the scanner right there. It, it, it. Please place your item on the scanner. It is on the scanner. It's on the scanner right there. Can, can't you detect that? Please place your item on the scanner. For crying out loud. It's right there. It's it's a bag of coffee. Please place your item on the scanner. Thank you. Your total is $46,000 and no cents. Exactly. That's been my experience, at least. Well, it's just another ham-fisted solution to a, a, a real serious problem. Now, you know what? That, uh, that uh, builder store, uh, uh, Lowe's, now they have, what I, at least what I think, is a great plan, right? Uh, they just have more people on staff and are uh, very obvious about uh, their visibility and stuff. And as a result, Lowe's has one of the lowest shrinkage rates in the whole damn retail industry. Why? Because they do the opposite of pooching your customers. They hire more people and are there to assist in a very uh, present way, if you catch my drift. Yeah, now you see, that's smart. I, I can't see using this uh, AI self-checkout technology being very uh, attractive to anybody, especially after you get flagged once or nine times. Please place your item on the scanner. Well, when we return, we're going to talk about another rather scary AI potential fail, uh, this time in South Korea. And uh, let's all welcome... The band Bookmobile. <laughs> oh, yeah, good deal. <laughs> yeah, I love this story. Love it. Lots more in store, so uh, stay right where you are, aren't we? To see how it works, please watch the screen. You know, it's no secret, I'm a big fan of the Grindhouse period of cinematic history, and nothing covers these times and events better than Grindhouse Resurrection magazine. For one thing, the folks who write for it have first-hand experience with what they're writing about. They were actually there, maybe even created some of the films we're talking about. Like in issue number two, a rather scathing and wonderfully insightful article on the BS on Blu-ray. Not everything on that format should be. And in an article by Richard Tater, he outlines a few of the direct-to-video films that probably didn't warrant the restoration, or for that matter, the hefty price tag. I call that a public service. So will you. Pick up a copy of Grindhouse Resurrection magazine. Info on ordering your copy is in the show description. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. The show for everybody, but not everybody will like it. TheFuseBoxShow.com The Hot Wire of Science. Well, friends, I know we seem to be hovering uh, quite a bit lately in this AI world on this program, but some things you just can't ignore. And uh, here's one. Uh, this time from South Korea. And, and this is really weird. I'm speaking to an AI pop star. Is this the future of entertainment? AI celebrities and singers? Yes, it's possible. Of course, we cannot be seen in person. But if you have a device, you can communicate with us anywhere at any time. As a virtual group, we are not limited by location. We can broadcast anywhere. The only thing we cannot do is sign an autograph. Well, 
I might hasten to add there are a few things they can't do. <laughs> yes, Mr. Keynes, that's very true, but uh, that's currently in development. A couple of K-pop groups in South Korea are completely and totally fake. And they already have tens of millions of followers. Now, the developers say the goal really isn't to replace human performers, but instead to create the next generation of Siri assistants, but uh, <laughs> one that sings and dances and one that you would actually, at least according to them, want to interact with. They will remember you. They will know about you and they will talk based on that information. AI creations would theoretically develop a unique relationship with every user and be available around the clock on every device. Hi everyone, this is Tyra from Maeve. And We're not limited by language. Bonjour, je suis Zena de Maeve. Of course, there are still a few bugs. Now it's time for the moment you have waited so much. Me love you long time. <laughs> well, <laughs> still got a few kinks in the system, so to speak. <laughs> or 11 fingers on one hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the folks at Pulse9 um, who developed this, using uh, deep fake and uh, motion capture technology, produced the band Eternity's first music video to accompany the <laughs> rather ironically titled track, I'm Real, <laughs> back in uh, 2021. Hmm. Saw what they did there. Yes, yes. Well, reaction to the video was mixed. Many social media users felt the band members' facial expressions looked unnatural and divorced from their bodies, while others said, and, and you know, and this here, this is a term that I've heard a bunch of times when using, fr well, frankly, any AI-generated imagery, the, quote, uncanny valley effect whereby uh, viewers are discomforted by things that resemble humans, but clearly aren't. Oh, like looking at Matt Gates. <laughs> oh, if it were only so, Mr. Keynes, we'd erase his hard drive forever. Uh, but five months later, that's right, five months later, when uh, Pulse9 released Eternity's next music video, No Filter... Followers noted then that the group was almost indistinguishable from the real thing. I'm surprised how realistic they sound, and the virtuals look more realistic than the debut song, reads uh, the most liked comment on YouTube. And again, the thing that keeps coming up with all of these recent AI innovations is... And some programmers concede there may need to be laws to regulate these creations. We have to be careful, actually. If somebody evil can use it, it might be disaster. Yeah, we keep harping on it here on the show, but there needs to be regulation in place with uh, equal alacrity to these uh, ever-increasing innovations. Or, or, or it's going to be a, another one of these uh, situations we find ourselves in frequently where the technology outpaces society and uh, we get into this mess of a sort of retrofit legal thing, which, uh, at least in this case, might even be more dangerous than uh, anything we've ever faced. Well, here's a little balance to all the weird techno threats out there, although this, too, is a response to a very real threat, a threat of silence of quashing voices that actually do have something to offer to society. And, and no, I'm not talking about the rise of a pizza-headed creature that lives under the Washington, D.C. Capitol building. You're not? No, I'm really not, Mr. Keynes. Uh, this is about a wondrously positive demonstration of the right to read whatever, whenever, and wherever, underscore that wherever, with big black lines. As we know, uh, book banning in uh, public schools has been on the rise in these uh, here United States, jumping by a whopping 33% during the 2022-2023 school year, evidently. And, of course, Florida 
has uh, overtaken Texas as the state with the highest number of titles pulled off the shelves and accounts for just under half of the nationwide bans. <laughs> the topics of danger, of course, are uh, well known, right? Books dealing with uh, themes like physical abuse, sexual assault, race, and uh, LGBTQ plus identities. Mm, like a fire, bro. For any who disagree. It says right here in this book. Well, can you smell that smell? Mmm, burning. Mmm. Well, the New Republic partnered with uh, organizations like the House of Speak Easy and the American Federation of Teachers to create a bookmobile tour of banned books and hopes to use it as a way to fight back against censorship. Now, organizers plan to hand out 20,000 books as they uh, pass through the likes of uh, Florida, Virginia, Missouri, and Kentucky. Uh, Aaron Cox, the executive producer of House of Speakeasy, who was uh, working with the tour, said, literature shouldn't be a privilege. It should be something everyone can have access to. Kind of like voting, you know? But that's a pangolin of a completely different color. Thank you. So the uh, Banned Books Tour is uh, putting accessibility at the front of its agenda. Staffers have uh, created festival events in each city to give uh, free books to children, including banned titles, but uh, only if requested. So uh, information will also be shared with parents, teachers, and librarians guiding them on how best to fight against censorship in their communities. Now, of course, the folks who see all of this as the devil's work are having none of it. Uh, Kim Blanchard, the New Republic's marketing director and tour mastermind, is aware of this outcry from the idiots. Before the bus even left Cadman Plaza Park in Brooklyn, New York, she received word of anticipated threats. Protests were expected in uh, Daytona, Florida, with one group calling on the mayor to stop the bookmobile from even entering the area. And uh, she goes on to say here that I'm not worried about violence because I'm hoping people have a sense of humanity. I definitely foresee some protesting and picketing, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed it doesn't turn into more than that. Yeah, that would be smart, yeah. Yeah, indeed. And uh, we're happy to report that there were no instances reported of any anti-literate madness on the uh, banned bookmobile sites. So, uh, actually, in one case in uh, North Carolina, the idea of stopping the tour from uh, even venturing into the state yet again was reversed due to a very strong media campaign in support of the tour. Oh, good on them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the New Republic's bookmobile isn't the uh, first national initiative of its kind. Uh, Penguin Random House just launched Bandwagon, a vehicle for change, which will be touring the U.S. South for the duration of Banned Books Week, stopping in uh, Nashville, New Orleans, and elsewhere. They'll showcase a selection of the most frequently challenged books that they publish. While uh, Blanchard hopes that uh, this is the only year these initiatives will need to take place, she says the New Republic will tour again in 2024 if, in fact, there is a need. Well, that's making lemonade, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we applaud the efforts of all the uh, concerned here and, uh, in a way, seriously, hope there isn't a need for a repeat of this tour. But if there is, and uh, ignorance and shallow-mindedness still is uh, taking a center stage, then... Uh, Bring on the bus. If you suffer from a disease like cancer, congestive heart failure, Parkinson's, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or rapid onset dementia, there's a good chance you're feeling unwell. Placebo. Worse, many of these diseases not only make you feel unwell, they can, and often do, lead to end of life circumstances. And in a recent survey, Almost 100% of respondents expressed a strong preference for not dying. Placebo. 
Studies have shown that when sufferers of various diseases are given a placebo or sugar pill as part of a control group in a double-blind study, a significant number often experience short-term relief from the symptoms of the disease referred to as the placebo effect. Placebo. While the placebo effect offers no life-extending benefits, many of the unfortunates in a control group experience a temporary improvement. Fooled by the sugar pill, they feel like they're actually getting better. They're not, of course, but hey, even a brief period of respite from that I'm gonna die feeling is a win worth celebrating. Placebo. Mom died, but she was actually happy for a couple days thanks to placebo. And she kept taking it, hope against hope it would work. And I was like, mom, it's a freaking sugar pill. But she wouldn't listen, you know, what are you gonna do? Hey, is that the new iPhone? Yeah, can I see it? Oh, you no, know, I want one of those. Placebo. Duff Pharmaceuticals spelled placebo with an I after the C to avoid unfortunate legal entanglements with the sugar industry. Placebo. Ask your doctor about placebo. Sir, it's a, it's a $500 sugar pill. It, it does nothing. But the placebo effect... Only works if you don't know it's a sugar pill. And why are you telling me it's a sugar pill? As, as I explained to you, sir, it's, it's, it's only, it's only, you know what? I give up. Placebo is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The efficacy of placebo has not been confirmed by FDA-approved research. This product is not intended to replace any medication or therapeutic treatments prescribed by a healthcare professional. Side effects may include false hope, sugar cravings, and an empty wallet. Do not take placebo if you are allergic to sugar or any of its components. Always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new treatment. Individual results may vary. Duff Pharmaceuticals is not responsible for any false expectations or potential harm resulting from the use of placebo. This advertisement is intended for informational purposes only. Okay, hold on to your booster shots, friends. It's time for another trip to that area down there. In that area down there. Oh, this is a rich one. This is a rich one. Let me take you back in time to the days of uh, COVID cure scammers. You know, Orange Guy said injecting bleach was a perfectly sound medical principle, at least according to him, Mr. Indictment of 2023. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs so it'd be interesting to check that brilliant yeah so a tale of a phony covid cure an even phonier church but an absolutely real set of consequences for these four dweebs jonathan jordan mark and joseph grennan had themselves a plan. Sell this wondrous concoction called Miracle Mineral Solution to the conned up multitudes through their Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing. This uh, miracle cure was discovered to be a highly toxic industrial bleach that this tweaked band of miscreants manufactured from what uh, photos and videos reveal as a dirty, rundown, and kind of stinky shed in Jonathan Grennan's backyard in Bradenton, Florida. Right, where they were manufacturing this miraculous mineral junk. The photos show dozens of blue chemical drums containing 10,000 pounds of sodium chloride powder, thousands of bottles of MMS, and other items used in the manufacture and distribution of that stuff. The blue chemical drums of uh, sodium chloride powder, the primary active ingredient in uh, MMS, were affixed with warning labels, advising the product was toxic and highly dangerous to consume. So three months after they were uh, convicted, 
of selling toxic industrial bleach as a fake COVID-19 cure through their online church, a federal judge in Miami sentenced them to serve prison time, 151 months in prison for conspiring to defraud the United States by distributing an unapproved and misbranded drug and for contempt of court, according to a news release from the U.S. Attorney's Office, Southern District of Florida. Prosecutors called the Grenins con men and snake oil salesmen and said the family's Genesis II Church of Health and Healing sold, are you ready, one million dollars worth of their so-called miracle mineral solution, distributing it to tens of thousands of people nationwide. In videos, the solution was sold as a cure for 95% of known diseases, including COVID-19, Alzheimer's, autism, brain cancer, HIV AIDS, and multiple sclerosis prosecutor said. Did it remove unwanted hair? No, I think it grows it on the inside of your mouth. Yeah. But the uh, U.S. Food and Drug Administration had not approved MMS for treatment of COVID-19 or for any other use. The FDA had strongly urged consumers not to purchase or use MMS for any reason, saying that uh, drinking MMS was the same as drinking bleach and could cause dangerous side effects, including severe vomiting, diarrhea, and life-threatening low blood pressure. The FDA actually received reports of people requiring hospitalizations, developing life-threatening conditions, and even dying after drinking this stuff. A Miami federal judge ordered the church to stop selling the substance in 2020, but that was ignored. Genesis websites describe Genesis as a, quote, non-religious church, whatever that means. And defendant Mark Grennan, the co-founder of Genesis, has repeatedly acknowledged that Genesis has, quote, nothing to do with religion and that he founded Genesis to, quote, legalize the use of MMS and avoid going to jail. So, how'd that work out for you? Yeah. Well, buyer beware might be a good thing to remember in any case. Especially if it's sold from a rusted out tool shed down in dismal seepage, Florida. Yes, Mr. Keynes. And it's why we tirelessly ask the Time encrusted question. What the fuck, Florida? <laughs> Oi, and with that uh, bit of toxic lunacy, we'll call it a show, but not before thanking our contributors on this edition of the show Scott Campbell, Regina Carroll, Calum Deering, Nico Lane, Daniel Marshall, and Jeff Bollard. Thanks as well to the Amboy Duke of Decibels. <laughs> Milk Canes for technical assistance and so forth and so on. Well, pleasure as always. Uh, and folks, you can uh, help keep the goodwill spreading around too by helping us in this fine audio production out by going over to Patreon and becoming a member. Indeed. An exclusive club, friends. Where upon signing up, you'll get immediate free swag, access to uh, shows early, and knowing that you are helping us keep uh, whatever this is coming at your ear holes. That's patreon.com forward slash the Fusebox show. We'd uh, really appreciate it. Thanks as well to the good folks at Grindhouse Resurrection Magazine for feeding our hunger for all things Grindhouse. And feeding our hunger for food, too. Uh, well, there is that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we greatly appreciate them, and uh, you can order uh, Grand House Resurrection Magazine and a growing inventory of other things at 42ndStreetPete.net. Link is in the show description there for you. Thanks as well to you, friends, for pushing play on this installment of the show. It would be 
so lonely without you. Dark and kind of cramped with a slowly depleting air supply. Kind of like that guy in the hide bed I have been your eavesdropping on the voices in my own head. Host, Mark Rose, saying, until our next cartoon. Fuse box.